Hello guys, Nato Ace here, and I want to give my thoughts on the announcement that happened at EVO of 2023. So, the event came and gone, it is what it is. Congratulations to the winners, and I have to admit, the tournament is entertaining, and I might give my opinion about the format, the changes on a different video. For this one, I want to give my thoughts on the announcement they did during the EVO weekend. So first, right out of the bat, the elephant in the room, no whatsoever form or shape any news about Marvel versus Capcom. So they did a throwback. That was only, it is what it is. So people were hoping maybe the reason they put Marvel versus Capcom 3 because there might be some sort of minor update or whatever. Well, sadly, there was nothing. And they did watch Max's stream about it. So all he can say, and I kind of agree what it is, at this point on is, you got to support, to some extent, the Marvel vs. Capcom 3 mod community. You're adding new characters. That is going to be your source, your experience with Marvel vs. Capcom, the franchise. Capcom probably can't do anything about it. Disney, well, you've been following them. Let's just say they have a financial woke problem, but I'm not going to go there. So it is what it is. Nothing about Marvel vs. Capcom. It would have been nice if they actually did some sort of remaster to Marvel vs. Capcom 2. I mean, there's that one of arcade, but that's all. But speaking of one of arcade, one of arcade themselves introduced another Capcom Deluxe arcade with all classic Capcom. I'm not gonna lie, I don't really care about one of arcade, not a fan of it. Why would I want a baby arcade in my house? I don't even have a lot of room. There's a thing called the rig or classic compilation on the console. I'm good with that. But hey, another Capcom Deluxe Baby Arcade with a lot more classic Capcom. How many times are you gonna port this? It was good when it was like one or twice, but now they're doing this too many times. Gotta tone it down, but it is what it is. That's what they have. So other announcement that happened during EVO weekend is first, they finally reveal the release date for, they call it Pocket Bravery, which is a homage to Capcom vs. SNK, the Neo Geo Pocket game, Mark of the Millennium. That was fun, of course you can get that, so they have their own version, even as a guest character show from Breakers, which is a Neo Geo game. So on the PC, it's gonna become this August, and on console, coming soon. But if you're interested with this game, go for it. Nickelodeon All-Star Brawl to announce a new character Plank 10 from Spongebob and they also showed a new mechanic called the slime system which is if you don't know why slime remember there is a show on Nickelodeon where it's like a SNL for kids and if you say a secret word I think the word what they get dumped in slime and of course Double Dare has slime so Nickelodeon and slime kind of like work together so it kind of makes sense on this one and uh, each character now will have a super move and some EX move so surprisingly and as for like I said Plank 10 Yes, it was leaked, so it was confirmed. So a chance of Doug and Keenan and Kel probably is out the window. So another one, and I never really talk about it because I really don't care. Idol showed on a free-to-play fighting game with all the VTubers. So they released a new character by the name of Pecora, another VTuber. She dressed like a rabbit. That's all I know. But hey, if you're a VTuber fan, there you go. More content for that one. So another one that a lot of people are high for Credit to the Canon Brothers, the founder of EVO. They are doing a free-to-play fighting game that based on League of Legends. And they did watch the Netflix one, highly recommend it. So they already talked about the game, simple input, free-to-play, tag team mechanic. I'm just gonna wait and see, but hey, a lot of people are praising it, so therefore it's gonna be good. So they announced another character by the name of Yasuo, a samurai guy, and of course he has even interesting, a color homage to Akuma. A swordsman, so they showed a demonstration. Hey, it looks good for what it is. Like I said, for me, I'm just gonna wait until the game comes out. Free to play. Again, I have to emphasize that. From what I understand, it could be late 2023, 2024. In Arc System, they had a panel about Uni. So they reveal Uni Part 2 or Uni Sis Celeste. So, supposed to be the conclusion of the Uni story. Of course, you say, wait a minute, only two games, really? Why not a trilogy? Well, remember, there's also like for Uni 1, there was that mid-upgrade game. Of course, there's a DLC with Laundrick. I'll talk about it in 2019. 
So now they're gonna have a sequel. Of course, it's gonna be like the same, but better mechanic. You know, it is what it is, whatever. Mega Man, the NES, with a sequel, but they're all the same. But, you know, potato, potato. So they showed some new character, who are they? I don't know. I'm just hopefully that it'll have English dub this time, but it's not gonna come out until 2024. So you gotta give credit to side games. So of course, like I said, they were the 0.5 at EVO. They have their own tournament for the beta. So first of all, Grand Blue Fantasy Versus Rising have a release date, November 30th, 2023. And this time it will be worldwide. So everybody's happy. Who's publishing it? Will there be a physical release? Who knows? The gist of it is that in the past, it was XC who published the first game and a bit of the controversy with the competitive people that the game was one month apart. So they were whining about it. I said, hey, I don't really care. I don't have English dub. But, you know, it is what it is. I mean, the game, unfortunately, was released where COVID started 2020. But now they're doing a redemption with this game because the interesting part is that the developer of the guy said, you know, why not a DLC or an expansion to the first game? Why a brand new game? Because it kind of makes sense what the guy said. Because if the cost is basically the same as a retail game, why not just make a new game out of it? It just makes more sense than just updating the old one and trying to retrofit rollback. Because they even admitted that they couldn't really do it. It was so hard. So why not just a new game, more characters, more improvement, more features, and rollback. So the game's going to come out on november 30th 2023 worldwide this time i wonder who the publisher is plus they show two new characters somebody named near a crazy lady with some sort of grim reaper partner i don't know i don't follow the grand blue fantasy lore another one is grimir some fancy lad elf fighter again i don't know but the best part for me personally is that it is confirmed like the first game there will be english dub Awesome. And the best part also is there's going to be a beta for people who are interested. And they're following some tactics from Koei's Dead and Alive. There will be a free edition. So kind of like Killer Instinct, Dead and Alive 5 and 6, the core edition, core value, funny. And now free edition with Grand Blue Fantasy Versus. So option is theirs. And the best part also is that if you have the first game, some of your saved data will transfer to the second game because... Apparently, the RPG mode is back, and there's going to be more stories. So awesome about that game. Kudos to the director for this game. So another one is there was a exhibition for Killer Instinct. And I'm like, okay, cool. I mean, the game's dead, right? Because even Phil Spencer admitted they said the reason why there's no sequel up there, whatever. People behind it are they don't work at Microsoft. They can't find anyone. But I guess celebrating its 10th anniversary, Somehow Phil Spencer persuaded Iron Galaxy to do one more update for this game. So it was announced that there will be some balanced patches, some updates, some mechanic fix. Plus, they will also make a Series XS version of the game. So 4K finally. Oh boy. So Max was happy about it. The Killer Instinct community happy about it because they've been asking for a sequel or whatever and they just said hey you know they don't have the manpower but now they do so for that one hey props to them and then this one i'm gonna talk about the censorship controversy in a different video but skull girls announced in 2024 they will have their own esports tournament and yes i said censorship because if you've been following the story unfortunately one of their update was they toned down some of the illustration on the game uh quick Thoughts about that, the gist of it, bad form, but it'll be a different video. But it kind of makes sense because when you are going to an esports tournament, from what I heard, there is some sort of regulation. Again, I don't know because if you follow 2016, 2017 at EVO for a while with Street Fighter V, there are certain costumes that they're not allowed to use, such as Armika's default costume, I talked about already, even Cammy's default costume. They were forced to change because ESPN was working with them and they said that will be a different video about censorship. And if I know it's a tiring topic, it's getting old, it's a repeated broken record, but it is something that as of right now in the West with Hollywood, with the strike, with society being weak, it is something that has to be addressed to some extent, but that's a different story. But in the case with Skullgirl, awesome, they have their own tournament. They even showcase Marie, the final character. When she's going to be released, who knows? I mean, for me personally, 
Golf course is a fun game. Yes, fan service wise. Well, like I said, the guy who created it, fan of fan service, but that, that's a different video there. So after that is SK showcase their stuff. So first of all, Nodge is gonna be coming out soon, but they also revealed another character and it's dual long from King of Fighter 2003, 11, of course, 13, and you know the Ash Crimson Saga, so his back, surprisingly. I mean, the silhouette kind of hinted. So, surprisingly, a lot of Ash characters are coming back in King of Fighter 15 because I know there was more Ness than Ash's Saga character, but hey, there you go. So, Duel Lawn, popular one. So, what about the other guy? Is he going to come back? <laughs> Who knows? So, another one is King of Fighter 13 Global Match, which is another version of King of Fighter 13, but this time with rollback, netcode, on the PS4 and on the Switch. But if I do recall, I could be wrong. The Steam Edition already have rollback, so why do you need a new version for that one? I don't know. But hey, again, for a modern platform, because the game's not even backwards compatible, I would be nice, just like King of Fighter 12 to have English dub, but it is what it is. It is meant for the competitive scene than the casual for that one. And then the biggest one here is they show a teaser of what the new Fatal Fury game. So it's not Fatal Fury, it's not Mark of the Wolf. It's sort of a merge between the call it Fatal Fury, City of the Wolves, and it does take place after Mark of the Wolf. They showed Rock, they showed Terry in his Mark of the Wolf outfit, which I prefer. There you go, two different timelines. If you follow the SK lore, apparently there's two timelines, the Fatal Fury and the King of Fighters. It is what it is. But yeah, it looks potential. I know it might look like the same as King Fighter 15 as in character model. But you gotta keep in mind that SK is not that big versus Capcom. So there are things that they probably can't do that Capcom can. But again, at least they're doing a new Fatal Fury game. People are happy. So this game might not even come out until probably 2025, 2026. Because yes, I did fail to mention it on my previous EVO announcement in 2022. I was going to do a video by itself, but I uh, got tired, so here it is. So, because here's the gist. 2022 was announced, it got green-lighted, meaning they got permission to do one. 2023, they're barely starting working on it. So, like I said, at the earliest could be late 2024, but I wouldn't be surprised it's going to be 2025, hey, or 2026. So, that's okay, they did good. So, the next one that there was sort of an announcement, but not in a good way, from Dragon Ball Fighters. So people were watching the final and saying, hey, where's the announcement? Well, they kind of did an announcement for even Evo, and that is, well, I hope you guys enjoyed the balance patch because they already did it. That's done. They did their final balance patch. So the question is, when's rollback? And all they can say was, well, you still have to wait longer. We're still having a hard time retrofitting the game. And again, so a lot of people just said, hey, look, if you can't retrofit it, why not just do a new game? The problem is, it's easy to do a Grand Blue Fantasy game because it's a video game. But when it comes to something licensed from Toei, like Dragon Ball, a little bit harder. Are they going to do Dragon Ball Fighters 2? I know the report is Tankeichi 4. So, I mean, to some extent for this game, I do enjoy it. But this game, uh, it's done. It's done. Not a lot of people support it. I mean, there's still that World Tour tournament. But, yeah, in the game with the rollback, they're still having a hard time, time and time again. It is what it is. You gotta accept that sometimes a lot of the Japanese developer, they're barely learning how to do rollback and trying to retrofit it. It's not that easy. They announced in Tekken, they revealed, first of all, another world tour. They revealed the finals, it's gonna be New Orleans. So my guess there, usually, when you're in that particular place, country, why? Usually there will be a new character that's gonna be in that particular country let's just say that i mean at one point there was a world tour that the finals was in thailand they got fakuram a thailand kickboxer so maybe maybe not we'll just have to wait and see so this time in 2024 is going to be new orleans so maybe there's going to be a character from new orleans so speak of new character they revealed too first of all raven returned since tekken 6 because in tekken 7 it was his master master raven Place supposed to be the same lore wise that's raven's master so now raven is back and they finally revealed the very first tekken 8 characters and that is azul kenna 
and she's from Peru and she loves coffee. All right, it is what it is. Again, diverse, that's the whole point. That's what Gerardo wants. So a new character, what's her lore? Right now, she just loves coffee. It is what it is. So a new character on the base roster. So kudos to Tekken, to Harada, and even I like the skit they did that Ono came out. Of course, it doesn't work for Capcom anymore. I think he works the same people who did the fake games and Melty Blood. And he did like sort of a joke, say, hey, you forgot your homemade. What homemade? Oh, Tekken Cross, and then they kicked him out. Again, relax, people. It's not being like a troll. It's a joke. It's a skit. Harada knows about it. Tekken Cross Street Fighter, will it ever come out? Some people even wondering. And my theory, my guess could be that it might not be Tekken Cross Street Fighter, but in Tekken 8, they might do a Street Fighter 6 collab expansion. So they're probably gonna add some character, like maybe Ryu, bring back Akuma, whatever. I mean, that's the whole point with Akuma. The rumor was, is that that was supposed to be sort of a Tekken Cross Street Fighter. And again, the gist of it was, it was supposed to be some sort of contract, but due to the poor sale of Street Fighter Cross Tekken, they said, well, we're breaking the contract because I think the rule is it has to sell well. If it doesn't, the collab is done. It is what it is, but again, hey, maybe in any shape or form, Street Fighter characters on Tekken, but probably a long far fetch there. And now, Mortal Kombat 1, so of course in the past, like what's going on on Mortal Kombat, finally Mortal Kombat 1. So the latest trailer they reveal, Ashra Havoc from the 3D Mortal Kombat and the Return of Reptile. So apparently Reptile is human that can morph into a reptile. I mean, it is what it is. It's so confusing what Reptile is all about because in the 3D era, he was just a snake. And then even on the reboot era, he's like a green snake. And it was kind of confusing, like, is he human? Is he not? And he turned into a snake. So now for this one is he turns into a human snake. It is what it is, Mortal Kombat. Am I excited? Not really much because to some extent, I try playing Mortal Kombat. I just not, I can't get into it, the mechanics. So it is what it is. Story-wise, hey, you know, it's Ed Boon's vision. And as well of the character design, again, whether you like or not, that's their vision. They have their own reason. I'm not going to touch it. I mean, whether the character is ugly or not, I mean, you know, this is a game about fatality and ripping people's bone apart, right? So as for the trailer, awesome. They're putting more characters. And of course, the DLC in another video I'm going to give my thoughts on. They probably just showed it because of the leak. It is what it is. So why hide it if people already know about it? It is what it is. And then Guilty Gear Strive, of course, long time ago, they already confirmed a season three. So there you go. So John is going to be part of season three. There's going to be new battle mechanics. Again, I did try playing Guilty Gear Strive, kind of slow. It's not the same as the older one, but of course, I'm not an Uber fan. I would have played it more like Exert Rev in Rev 2, but for they did not have English dub. Gist of it is. They want to release it early, but people didn't like it. So they said, okay, we'll fix that. So they did it with Strive, kudos to Daisuke. And you might wonder what happened to the future of Blaze Blue. Well, Mori left Arc System Work, unknown reason, from what I understand, it's just future endeavor. So what's the future of it right now? Who knows? I mean, they're focusing on Guilty Gear, though. That's what it is. I mean, my personal opinion, do some balance patches on cross tag battle and add more characters. That's it. And then, Coming to a close is Street Fighter. So you got the Cap Jam people playing some music. And then there was some part like, why are they playing the Ninja Turtles? Because apparently they are doing collaboration with them. So Street Fighter 6 collabing with the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. So what it is, is that your avatar fighter can dress like the Ninja Turtle. That is so left field. It's so weird, but hey, whatever, I mean, you see Street Fighter in Power Ranger. You see Street Fighter in comics with other franchise. So why not? So, and remember, they even said it. The director and the producer of Street Fighter 6 say there will be some collab. Be surprised that there might be some weird one. Some that makes sense. Some people say, well, Tekken makes sense. True. And I even suggest, what about Cobra Kai? Johnny Lawrence and Danny LaRusso. I mean, they're wearing the white and red gi. So why not? Kind of makes sense. I mean, you never know, but I'm surprised that like, their first collab is a license rather than a video game. So again, kudos, that's awesome. And then they show a teaser for Aki. So it is confirmed that she is a student of Fang. 
And surprisingly, I didn't even know that Fang is Rashid's rival for Street Fighter V. It is what it is. That's what the rival is all about. So no one knows how she plays, but her concept, because of the comic also they showed on Odon at EVO, it is poison-based, and she mentioned Fang. There you go. So they show her on the World Tour mode. But again, coming this fall, you know how it goes like Rashid. So the best part I have to give Capcom kudos is that you might not be able to play the character himself unless you pay for the DLC, but the World Tour mode is free. So you can create your avatar fighter to whatever they want. So you can try a Rashid style, now an Aki style. I mean, granted you can't play it online or whatever. I mean, it's just in World Tour mode, but hey, it's better than nothing. It's sort of a preview of how the character works. I mean, it's not bad. Uh, for a while, it's like using Rashid and leveling up his bond. Not bad, so I gotta say, you know. But also Capcom, at least. I mean, this Evo, I have to admit, is better than last year's. It was very entertaining. And for the top six, I'll talk about it in a different video. But the gist of it is, it just makes sense. Whether you like it or not, it makes sense. Because Rick basically confirmed now, moving forward, it will always be top six. In the perspective of business, it makes sense. And he also announced that Evo Japan 2024 is going to happen. Plus, he already set the date for EVO 2024 also. It's going to be the last week of June. And in another video, I'm going to talk about the future of EVO. Is it good and bad? You know, the history behind it. But overall, the announcement here, they're good. Yeah, there are like some are like, ah, that sucked like Dragon Ball Fighters, but the game is old. Melty Blood didn't have any announcement. I mean, I don't know what the future of that game is. But yeah, a lot of them have like potential update now again for more come 11 it's done i wouldn't be surprised that on evo 2024 it's gonna be more come one makes sense tekken 7 probably done and i mean 2024 unless it's gonna be fall of 2024 because <laughs> that'll be a shocker but it's a year from now so it's gonna get there eventually but for now just relax still 2023 how far with tekken 7 and the other games hey they're gonna have more improvement more season more update we'll just have to wait and see so that is my thoughts on EVO 23's announcement. Good. Better than last year, I get to some extent. Sure. But again, a lot of this announcement, they keep sparkly coming out on YouTube, on social media. So, I mean, you don't really need EVO to some extent, but it's just good to see something like that. So that's my thoughts. With that, I'll see you guys later. The featured player's win streak has been stopped. We currently have a player on a winning streak.